When we think of Holland, we mostly think about the red light district or smoking a great big joint outside a coffee shop. But the Dutch ain't just about sex, drugs and clogs. <laughs> Overnight, in the normally placid city of Amsterdam, acquired throughout Europe, the name Riot City. Between 1960 and 1980, there were riots across the country. This was no anti-war demo. The people fought the army for the right for cheap housing. So although we see Holland as a nice liberal place to go for a stag do, the Dutch have got quite a bit of form for violence, and it was all about to kick off at the football. Guess what? It was us, the English, who exported hooliganism to Holland. When Spurs rioted against Feyenoord in Rotterdam back in the 70s. That's really the moment when hooliganism was born in Holland. And throughout the 70s, and really thereafter, it always remained very anglophile. This incident has been dubbed the day Dutch football lost its innocence. Some say Dutch society has been getting nastier ever since. First off, I'm going to meet Paul Voss, who gained the trust of the top Dutch firms to write his book on hooligans. He's going to give me a briefing on the Dutch hooligan culture. In Holland, you have the big four firms. They are from the big four cities in the country. It's uh, Feyenoord from Rotterdam, Ajax from Amsterdam, FC De Haag, and FC Utrecht. So let me get that right. The four main firms are Ajax from Amsterdam, Feyenoord from Rotterdam, FC Den Haag from Den Haag, and FC Utrecht from Utrecht. So those are the four main firms that have been at war with each other for years. They can be very dangerous because the hate is very, very intense. Some of them told me, when I see that guy, or when I see a supporter, or a hooligan of that crew, or that mob, uh, I can kill him. I've discovered that the biggest rivalry here is between Ajax and Feyenoord. I'm going to find out why this rivalry has become the fiercest in Holland. In 1989, the hatred between the two literally exploded. Two homemade bombs have exploded at a football match in Holland, injuring 19 people, nine of them seriously. Feyenoord attacked Ajax with two homemade nail bombs. Ajax's stadium was turned into a war zone. 14 people were injured, and it was a miracle that nobody was killed. This incident was widely covered by the international media. Journalists reported the growing reputation of Dutch hooligans. Holland is fast taking over as Europe's most troubled footballing nation. This was a major turning point. The government desperate to combat hooliganism introduced English-style safety measures, all-seater stadiums and CCTV. But none of these changes solved anything. They simply moved the violence from the stands onto the streets. In 1997, the top boy of Ajax was murdered when the F-side clashed with hooligans from Feyenoord. They were not even playing each other on the day of the fight. They met on the side of a motorway just outside Amsterdam. They rennen tussen supporters van Ajax en Feyenoord bij Beverwijk. Vanmiddag is dus één dode gevallen. De dode is waarschijnlijk één van de leiders van de Ajax gang. Van alle Stanley messen. Echt honkbalknuppels, knuppels. Carlo Picconi, Ajax's top boy, was beaten to death by Feyenoord hooligans with knives, hammers and chains. Police seized an arsenal of weapons, including baseball bats, Molotov cocktails and electric stun guns. I think that was the point that every, everything uh, was changing in Holland. A new generation was coming. That was the example of them. The government was forced to admit that hooliganism was spiraling out of control. The riot police were unable to deal with the escalation of violence. So the government called in the army. The government gave permission for army choppers to airlift riot cops into hooligan hotspots. CCTV and all-seater stadiums haven't really been much use here. Feyenoord have set fire to Ajax's stadium and there have been mass riots around the ground. It could go off at any moment and the rave scene was growing big in Holland. While most people were popping pills and getting loved up, the hooligans saw the raves as another place to kick off. In the UK, the rave scene killed off hooliganism, 
but it was the total opposite in Holland. The fights intensified and police shut down many of the parties because of violence and the hooligans' involvement with drugs. A year after Ajax's clubhouse was burned down, 70 of the Ajax firm attacked Den Haag's clubhouse and stabbed two of them. As well as torching the clubhouse, we were told that they tried to set fire to two of the fans. This led the police to block the motorways between Den Haag and Amsterdam. The government declared a state of emergency. Uh, who's winning? The authorities or the hooligans? And what effect is this having on Dutch culture? While the police have been coming down hard on hooligans, the clubs have been trying to find a middle ground. We try to know them and we want them to know us so that we can influence them. Many of the clubs have tried to pacify the hooligans by giving them their own supporters' homes and representatives who have a say on the club's board. Suspected hooligans have their pictures put on the internet in a program similar to Crime Watch where viewers are encouraged to turn the hooligans in. Crazy. It's a crazy country. Are you talking about liberal country? No fucking way. This is a police state. Many of the hooligans feel like they're being treated a lot worse than they deserve. Even murderers and, and child molesters and everything, they, they're not allowed to put, put with their faces on telly. But hooligans? Fuck. You're a football supporter? You're nothing. I was told that because of this, the hooligans have become more violent towards the police. Making it more dangerous for police and the fans. In Rotterdam in 1999, rioting was so bad that police gunned down four final fans. But the hooligans shot back. The police seriously injured four of them. The authorities think the riots were planned beforehand. They were running battles in the streets and it took 750 police to restore order. In this climate of organised violence, some of the clubs are too scared to even ban them. You have to listen to them because they can use their thing and that's violence. It's not so much that they've encouraged the hooligans, but the, the Dutch clubs are afraid of cracking down on them because the, you know, the chairman is afraid of the fans. The fans know where he lives. The fans can come and do something to him or his family. So the clubs uh, won't do anything to stop them. Despite these fears of reprisals, there's one man driving the fight against the firms. Former Ajax chairman Michael Van Praag now heads a task force that's pushing for stronger anti-hooligan laws and sentences similar to those in the UK. These laws might help to target the older guys who the police know because they've been around for years. But they don't know the younger guys coming through because they organise themselves in more secretive groups. They were determined to fight at unexpected times and secret locations. Police and journalists suggested that these quicker, more intense clashes could lead to another murder, like Bavervate. You got the First World War, you got the Second World War, and the third is coming up. Hooligans in Holland, I think it will never stop. So despite the government's efforts to stamp it out, hooliganism looks set to escalate in Holland and threaten its liberal society. Dutch society has changed and people are very hard to each other, distance, and I think that's the way of Dutch life now. I've experienced a totally different side to the liberal sort with Holland that I expected. I've seen the level of hate between these firms and it's getting worse. I think the Dutch urgently need to solve their hooligan problem before it's too late.